Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Riley and today we're going to be looking at the cryptocurrency known as Stellar Lumens. Now as always with any cryptocurrency review that I do, first we're going to look at what it is, then we're going to have a look at the features of it, why it is useful, the team and community behind it, where you can buy and store, the roadmap and the um, thoughts on the future of the cryptocurrency, and then a little bit of technical analysis at the end. And if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'll put each of these headings down below in the description box with a timestamp. So if you want to only see a specific part of the video, you can just click on the timestamp and watch that part. I also want to preface this video by saying that I'm not a financial and this is not financial advice. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So, what is Stellar and Stellar Lumens? Well, it's, it comprises of a couple of different things. And first, you've got the Stellar Foundation. And this is a non-for-profit organization which aims to bring low-cost financial services to, um, around the world, especially to people of um, lower socioeconomic status and in developing countries. Now, Stellar is the open source protocol um, for the uh, exchange of value um, which was founded in early 2014 by Jed McCaleb and Joyce Kim. So that's the blockchain platform. And uh, the cryptocurrency which is on the Stellar platform is known as Lumens or XLM. And now anyone can create their own tokens on the Stellar platform. However, XLM is the native asset on it. And just a fun fact, Stellar once was a fork of Ripple, but due to scalability issues, they actually rewrote the code uh, in order to get around this and, and are running the new uh, software or the new um, source code, I should say, to this day. So for the coins uh, for XLM, we have currently 17.8 billion XLM in circulation with a total of 103.5 billion XLM um, in the future. Now, this is a quite a big uh, amount of tokens, but this is not a decentralized currency. It's again, like a lot of other coins, it's a utility token, um, which needs high, which is built for high liquidity and things like that. So you want to encourage spending. Also, the fees, um, they're really tiny, but there is still a little fee, uh, which is about uh, 0.00001 XLM, which is about thousands of a, th a thousandth of a cent. Um, and I'll get into why there is a fee a little bit later. The transaction times, they're technically three to five seconds, but that is basically instant. And the transactions per second, um, a conservative estimate for the Stellar network when it is up and running properly is at least a thousand transactions per second. So very nine, uh, very high, a good number. So let's look at the features of Stellar. Well, first we've got to go into the Stellar Census Consensus Protocol. And this is because Stellar actually doesn't use a proof of work algorithm like Bitcoin does or Litecoin or any other proof of work uh, cryptocurrency. Instead, it uses Stellar Consensus Protocol or the SCP. And so what this does, um, at specific points of time, all nodes must period uh, periodically update their own uh, version of the blockchain, their own truth of the blockchain, if you will. And when, a node, when the nodes decide that is, um, up, uh, that is safe to update or ex um, upload their truth of the blockchain, they will externalize it and publish it. And then um, the agreed upon uh, blockchain, which, is, which has the consensus of the most of the network, because um, every XLM you have will count towards a vote on the network. And if you get the majority of the votes for the blockchain or for that truth of the blockchain, then it will become uh, inscribed into the chain. So SCP isn't designed to require a unanimous vote. So it doesn't need everyone to say that this is the right thing, um, but it's only the majority of the network because this removes the threat of Byzantine error. So Byzantine error is basically in simple terms when one node sort of identifies um, uh, incorrectly and as multiple nodes signaling for multiple things. Um, so if someone wants to send money, basically a list of trust servers will begin to agree on the validity of that payment. And then the majority of these servers will have to agree on the validity um, of the sender and the validity of the funds which the sender has before they verify it. So that's sort of like proof of work in um, 
in Bitcoin and things like that, but it's just a little bit different. And now one of the biggest things on Stellar is a built-in decentralized exchange. And this allows people to transact any type of asset they want internationally, so it's borderless, and also allows the parties to transact over multiple currencies seamlessly. So that's one of the big things for Stellar. And there's a three ways you can transact value on Stellar. So you can, the first one is conversion through an offer. So you put it into a order book when you want to buy something or exchange something. And Stella, the Stellar protocol will try and find something. So if you want to exchange Euro for USD, it will try and find that. And if it can find that um, exchange, it will automatically make the switch between the two parties. Now, the second way you can do it is through using the Lumens um, cryptocurrency as an intermediate currency. And say, so if you were using a previous example of trying to switch euros to USD, or exchange euros for USD, um, what you can do, the Stellar network, if it can't find that pairing first, it will look up for a pairing of euros to XLM or Lumens, and then it will look for a pairing of XLM to USD. So that way it uses that as a sort of medium to switch between the Euro to the USD. And then also as a last sort of resort, um, the, it's the least efficient, but if there's nothing else to um, execute it through, it has to go through this. And this is through a chain of conversions. So this is going from multiple currencies to sort of like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of like going through like a maze of currencies to try and get to that N one. It's sort of like a Rubik's cube, I guess. Um, so for example, Euro, you want to go from Euros to USD again, you go from Euros to AUD, AUD to BTC, BTC to XLM, and then XLM to USD. So um, that's basically how the decentralized exchange works. And that can be anything that could be like, it doesn't just have to be currency, it could be something completely stupid, like, um, I don't know, um, nuclear warheads for wombats or something like that look it could just be absolutely something stupid um, but obviously not everyone's going to be doing that on the exchange and so the other another one of the features of the lumens protocol is uh, the inflation and so it has its own built-in inflation mechanism and this is about uh, well this is one percent um, of lumens per year which are released and how it works is that each week the platform will distribute these lumens to an um, to any account which gets over 0.05 percent of the votes from the other accounts in the network and so one xlm equals one vote and also i talked about how there is a little fee before uh for lumens or in stella um, and what happens is these fees are sent to a fee pool and these fees are actually distributed with um, the inflationary lumens one every week or so. And the reason for these fees, um, just like I mentioned before, uh, be, although they're incredibly small, what it actually does, it prevents people from spamming the network because these tiny fees, although sm only very small, when they add up to um, do enough uh, transactions in order to span the network, it just becomes economically unviable. So that's just a sort of safety countermeasure. Um, and also, people might think that this inflation is not really good for the currency, but 1% um, is really not a big amount of inflation. 1% is quite, quite small. And also what it does, it promotes liquidity and it promotes spending across the network. And um, it is most likely... Um, people who have high liquidity in their accounts who will get the votes not the people who hold the lumens not pe like hold the most lumens and hoard it and also stellar is a platform where you can develop d apps decentralized applications and you can run icos on the platform but not too many of people have done icos and things like that yet but as the platform gets more popular i'm sure they will grow in number so why is it useful? Well, it's got quite a few use cases and the first one is remittances. And if you don't know what remittances is, remittances are, they're basically when you're sending money overseas and possibly to into another transaction. And so why, why are they good for this? Because it's instant, uh, low fees, and you're able to seamlessly transact between different currencies. So that's a really good bonus of it. Micropayments, um, 
since you have so many coins um, and low fees, uh, what you can do is you can send a lot of micropayments. Um, and for merchants, it's really good because you can set up incremental payment options or payment plans, sort of like lay by for people or for customers. Mobile branches, so basically this is mobile bank branches. So in a lot of currency, in a lot of countries, um, they don't have brick and mortar banks and Stella are really trying to target this audience, these people who don't have the bank, um, don't have financial systems and banks in their country, in their area. And so these are literally just mobile banks that drive around the country and um, Stella, uh, the Stella network enables this to be carried out. Also mobile money, which is like um, interoperable money, money platforms. So things like um, Google Pay and things like that, just an example, Apple Pay. And then social enterprises plus non-government organizations. And this is because they can utilize the low cost financial services and high efficiency um, services of the Stella network, um, which really helps to bring change in like sort of charities and social projects. Now Stella has a lot of partners um, and they are sort of, they keep adding more and more partners. If I go, to here, these are just a list of some of the partners which Stella have, and they've got quite a lot of partners in a lot of different countries. And you can see um, a, lot, so a lot of them, these companies are all over the world, but a lot of these companies are really in developing, company, uh, developing countries, which is like I said, uh, they're sort of um, Stella Lumen's target audience. Also, um, Stella has a lot of donors and a lot of support from institutions, uh, which is a really good thing to see. Um, corporate donors include BlackRock, which is a $29 billion company, Google, Stripe, Fast Forward, uh, Parkway, which is a Nigerian company. Um, and recently we've just had IBM partner with Stella Lumens. So that is a really, really huge um, thing. And they've just set up a network of um, oceanic banks over the oceanic region um, in order to successfully develop cross-border payments and a cross-border payment system which is built on the Stellar network in order to help them financially and help them get access to financial institution and so this is currently live within 12 different currencies but it is in still it is in development still but it is on it's working nonetheless it's a product and they've also recently partnered with Satoshi Pay. So this is a leading micro and nano transaction com uh, processing company. Um, and it's decided to use Stellar as its major platform. So the team in the community behind Stellar. First, we'll take a look at the team and we'll just have a quick look. I won't go too deep into the team, but they do have a really, really good team. They have a lot of um, experienced people in their team and a lot of really, um, well-known advisors in their team like i said there's quite a few people so i won't go into them but probably the biggest one you want to have a look at or biggest one to note is jed mccaleb and jed was actually the founder of mount gox and before you sort of think oh maybe that's not good he created mount gox and then later sold it to another person who ran mount gox into the ground and caused that big upset so he was not a part of that. And also he was a co-founder of Ripple as well. So um, he's had a lot of experience in blockchain um, as well as plenty of these other guys as well and girls as well. And so the, the community, um, it's a pretty modest community. Um, it's not huge, but it's not tiny. We've got the blog on Stella.org, which gives you regular updates. Uh, they've got a small Facebook community uh, and Reddit community but their Twitter is starting to grow. Uh, it's especially grown quite a bit over the last sort of month or two. And I see quite a bit of growth coming to it in the future as it rolls out some of its platform. So where do you buy and store it? Um, well, in terms of buying, there's not, there's a, there's quite, there's a few uh, exchanges which you can go to, but it's not an, um, a huge list. Like you've got Bittrex and Poloniex and Kraken and things like that. Uh, which most people are on, but it's not like everywhere as you can see. There's a um, there's only 26 pairings currently, but that's still enough to get quite a bit of liquidity. But it would be good to see it coming onto some more exchanges um, in the future, especially things like in Korean exchanges. 
And storing, uh, this is one of the really goods about good things about Illumins is that you can store it on so many different things. And I haven't even put the full list here because it'd just take too long to write down. But the main ones you'd have to look at are the Stellar Desktop Client and Cold Storage. You can store it on like the Legend Nano S or the Trezor. And then we've got a ton of different desktop and uh, mobile wallets as well as web wallets. So just go check that out. I recommend always, if you're holding large amounts for a long time, put it on cold storage. But if it's only a short term thing or you only got a little bit, the Stellar desktop client is fine. Now the future of Stellar Lumens. Um, in terms of the roadmap, they had a roadmap which was from 2015 to 2017. And they have achieved all those goals on their roadmap, um, which I think they have at least. And they have not released a roadmap beyond 2017 just yet. Um, this is due, uh, probably due to the fact that Stellar, the organization, the foundation, are really not focused on hype like a lot of other cryptocurrencies are. Um, and they want to sort of make sure that they have a good working product and just let the product do the talking for them, not sort of hype up their product with announcements and other things like that, which is a really good thing to see. Um, and also my thoughts on Stellar, um, Stellar has a huge potential to blow up and not only in price as an investment, but it has a huge opportunity to impact the lives of others, especially for people in poor and developing countries because a lot of these people do not have access to financial services and it's, all, it's not only having access to something like a bank, it's having access to things like the decentralized exchange, which allows say, farmers in the um in polynesia to connect with um buyers and merchants in indonesia or australia or new zealand or all over the world wherever you want to um, do it and it allows them to transact um, across that decentralized exchange due to the um, pairings that you can seamlessly go across and one of the things which people always talk about is stellar versus ripple and stellar versus omg because they often think that they're basically the same thing and Stellar and Ripple are not as similar as you'd think um, a lot of people think that just because it was a fork it is basically Ripple um, first of all Ripple is targeting a whole different audience to Stellar Ripple is targeting sort of more the upper class um, institutions um, and people who go to those institutions um, which have already access to financial services. Whereas Stellar, like I said, are targeting mostly people without financial services and in developing countries and things like that, trying to get um, them started and then help them economically and use blockchain as a method to do this. And Ripple is also quite much more centralized. Um, it is owned and controlled by a company. Well, not, not all of its control, but um, they do have the majority of the uh, coins in, in an escrow. And, but Stellar is an open source platform where the foundation, the non-profit organization, only has 5% of the XLM. So, and also Stellar has a decentralized exchange, which Ripple doesn't. Ripple is just a, a payment processing platform, whereas Stellar has, this, um, has the ability to build things upon it and also to um, have a decentralized exchange. So it's not that similar at all, really. And in terms of Stellar versus OMG, because they're both decentralized app platforms, this is sort of similar to my other argument with Ripple. OMG, yes, it is a decentralized um, exchange platform, but they're sort of targeting a different audience at the moment. Um, OMG is focusing mostly on Asia, whereas Stellar is focusing mostly on other parts of Oceania and um, Africa, but they will try, both of them will try to cover the whole world one day. And the thing which Stella has over OMG is the fact that Stella has a working um, platform which is being used already, but OMG is still in development, it still doesn't have a working product. So that's something to keep in mind. So now just a quick little bit of technical analysis. Um, Let's have a looky, shall we? Uh, where is it? Stellar, here we go. So we can see here that um, over the sort of past 
past year really we hit the altcoin bubble and then we've calmed down and as we've sort of got more and more news of Stellar especially when the IBM news hit we've really started to come up on a runner and I think it was yesterday actually that they launched their first platform in Berlin and on the 12th of uh, December I think they're launching in London um, it might be the other way around but I can't remember and so we've hit we hit a high and then pulled back and we're sort of just riding off this 50 day moving average here with quite a bit of volume still uh, we dropped off a little bit but recently we've held some really good consistent volume and we've run up to about um, nearly bare basically 16 cents and then we've pulled back to at the moment we're about 12 cents um, but we are seeing some good volume some actually increasing volume which is really good um, we've sort of cooled off on the RSI a bit so we've got some more room to run and we've just cooled off on the MACD and I think over the next few days it will start to cool off again but um, you'd sort of be looking out for that 12th of December day because that's when they're launching in Berlin so there's nothing really we can sort of determine yet as as of now it still looks fairly bullish um, but only time will tell uh, I think short term it'll be quite good and it'll have another hit but it's going to just depend on um, what happens with the whole market especially with Bitcoin um, how it is so volatile right now um, we've just got to wait and see what happens if it pulls back and if the market has a big correction or not now in terms of BTC we basically got the same chart so I'm not going to say too much more we've just got a bit of a um, further pullback um, on it we can see basically here we've got the same pretty much in volume and we've got a bit less on the RSI so we're nearly over uh, sold on the RSI but you might you might look at this 50 day moving average and think oh that's a bit that's a bit bearish isn't it but it's not really because Bitcoin has just absolutely shot up over the past few days so I'm not too worried about it as long as I can see there's good volume here and as long as we can get a nice bounce off this RSI and MACD I think we'll be pretty right in the short term but long term I think Seller is going to be a great project and if you hold for the long term you're going to make money no matter what am I buying in now um, no I'm not I bought in around here but um, I've got quite a big position well not a huge position but I've got a reasonable position in Stellar and I'm sort of just holding it for now and seeing what happens over the next couple of days so with that out of the way I want to thank you for watching this video and if you like this video or found it helpful please leave a thumbs up and a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button as I'll be bringing out future videos on other cryptocurrencies very soon I'll catch you later